you got one story, right? I got a Cherry Blend Middleton Tip 91, it says different. <laughs> I just love this hip hop shit, right? You know, I love this hip hop shit. I love the SP-1200 because it sits, you know, as one of those tools, right? That, that were just responsible for making some of the best records that ever came out, you know? There's a culture behind the SP. A lot of us that were actually active in hip hop music between like 1987, 8, 9, 9, 90, all the way 98, 99, 2000, before it started falling out of fashion first, right? You know, that's an intimately important machine to us. They all know what an SP-1200 now. I was trying to talk to them 10, 15 years ago, they don't know shit, and now they all know, right? You know, so now we're in the middle of another SP-1200 renaissance. The eBay prices have skyrocketed through the roof, and I've seen this happen before in other discontinued nostalgia products, right? And it's been happening with the SP-1200, it's only getting higher. And what I'm talking about here, what, what my excitement is building for, is the Rawsome Electro Music Edition for the 35th anniversary anniversary of the SP-1200 and we're talking about a renovated machine they're renovating they're taking it and they're making it as good or better than new right as good or better than new and we're talking about the Sphinx here right we're not talking about a pussycat we're talking about a legendary machine here not a rectangular dildo right this is not going to be some kind of tweaked out MIDI control device. When it comes to beatboxes, when it comes to drum machines, when it comes to samplers, they are renovating the Great Sphinx. You renovate the Great Sphinx. You don't rebuild the shit smaller. You got the left and right sample input, eight outs, various filters, MIDI, everything you would expect to see, right? There is no competition because we are the best, yeah. Looks like we're talking about a cooler power supply, right? Potentiometers down to the rubber feet has been replaced with, with as good or better products, right? I'm just very glad that this exists. Well, what's available on the Rossum Electro Music websites, right? Uh, if, if something drastically has changed, I'm definitely gonna update my opinion. But when I see what I'm looking at here, I'm looking at a, a device that has no competition. Looks like there's some subtle changes, a little red line over the programming, right? And now I see that there's a waitlist application. You know, you might be able to get on the waitlist for this. I don't think there's any, you know, I know there's different mindsets about making music, you know, but in my mindset, when you're dealing with a classic piece of equipment, you know, I wouldn't want to see anything less from anyone else, right, when it comes to the SP-1200. Because, you know, you know, I've got producer friends that when they were kids, they used to work at the grocery store for two years to save enough money to get a 2000 XL, still produce on that machine to this day because they work for it. So $2,000 to a kid 17, 18, 19, 20 years old, you and your 30 or 40 or 45, 50, anybody wants an SP-1200, right? If you're not willing to spend a couple of thousands above that to get something built better than new, you know? That's why those machines were so coveted. That's why those producers were so fucking dope because they were the ones who found a way to get their money together and get that piece of equipment because you couldn't just fucking do it on a phone. You couldn't do it on a computer, you know? It was something that, that it was a very elitist situation that I like and I miss. If I want to get one and feel good about it, I'm probably gonna have to sell mine, right? I've seen this happen a lot of times, right? In the arcade game business, there's people that hock off these machines, they've been tinkered with, you know, tweaked a little bit, you know, not worth the price, you know, it's a classic machine. Donkey Kong Jr. is worth $800 no matter what, right? You know, but but you get somebody, you know, that, that put one together a little bit nicer, they sell it for $1,200, right? Or, or $1,400 or $1,600, you know, somewhere at the most right there, you know, and, and you don't know, you still get the thing home, it's a 30-year-old machine, it might break. But you get Todd Tucky or Richie Knuckles at TNT or one of these places that know what the hell they're doing, that have access to the components, that, that are the proper people in the proper position to really work on a machine like this or renovate it, right? You get them, you know, working on it, you know, then you're gonna be you're gonna be presented with a piece of equipment like I was when I bought the more expensive versions of these arcade games at Todd Tucky's. I'll tell you, those don't break down on me, right? Because he went over the damn things with a fine-tooth comb and I got the best you know, to churn out the best. So I was gonna have to pay for that at least as much as you're gonna pay for a used one on eBay. Cause at the very least, you know, I I'm happy to see that the SP-1200 legacy is finally being truly added onto. And I'm excited to see more. All right, y'all, I'll be back to report when I find out more information. Peace.